Chinese girl, so I'm very worried about our country. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts online just to keep track of like the situation right now. The only real information that I have is that it spreads really fast. I'm not sure about what to say because I don't know what's really true or not. Yeah, so it's not just them. Uh, there's a lot of questions about what's going on. How big of a threat could this virus be? There was some panic over the SARS virus years ago when 44 Canadians died. We now know there is one presumed case of this new coronavirus in Canada. The patient was taken to Toronto Sunnybrook Hospital and is now in isolation. And health officials say compared to the SARS outbreak, they were really well prepared for this case. Another big difference from the SARS outbreak? There was no social media back then stirring up more fear and no Netflix. That's right, two days after we learned about the virus, Netflix launched this new series. The next pandemic is going to start and we just don't know where or how, but we know it will. That's right, it's called Pandemic, How to Prevent an Outbreak. And in China, check this out, the top trending app is now Plague Inc, a video game about a massive pandemic that kills half of humanity. So yeah, they're, they're games, they're TV shows, but it all adds to the fear factor. And while government officials here are telling us to keep calm, if you go online, some of the images from China are downright scary. We're going to dig into all of this. But first, here's a quick recap of what we know for sure. Official numbers to date suggest the coronavirus has infected close to 2,000 people and killed 56, most of those in China. But there are now confirmed cases in many other countries too, as far apart as Australia, France, the United States, and now, of course, Canada. China is working hard to try and contain the virus, locking down more than 50 million people. That's more than the entire population of Canada. They've banned planes, trains and cars from entering or leaving the Wuhan area. But China has also tried to contain the spread of information. Online censors have been busy scrubbing material that the state deems too alarming. And according to AFP News, police arrested eight people for posting what it calls rumors. And there were multiple reports from scientists and journalists that local authorities could have acted faster to stop the spread of the virus and that China may be underreporting the number of deaths. You've, I'm sure, seen some of the images like these ones. Wuhan just began speed building two massive new emergency hospitals to deal with the crisis. So, bottom line, people aren't sure what to trust. And many, of course, are flooding to social media to try and figure it all out. And some of the posts from Wuhan are slipping out to sites here like Facebook and Twitter, sites that are banned in China. Like, there's this unverified video apparently posted by a nurse in Wuhan, allegedly shows bodies li lining a hospital hallway. It was first posted on the Chinese network Weibo. It was removed, but not before it went viral on Twitter. And there's these videos showing patients being wheeled through an airport in a sealed off cage, allegedly quarantined because of the virus. Again, we haven't been able to verify these videos. So things that might look plausible, but are really hard to confirm. And then of course, there's blatant misinformation. Lots of that out there too. Like one viral post claiming that setting off fireworks can sterilize germs in the air. That one spread so widely that Chinese officials had to publicly debunk it. For more on how this is being played out in China is Jiayun Feng. She's a reporter with the BBC's Chinese service and is based in Washington. So Jiayun, you know, we're hearing that there's been so much more scientific transparency from China since the, the SARS outbreak years ago. Um, but a lot of questions about whether enough information has been shared. You, you track Chinese media, both state and online. What are, you, what are you seeing? What are Chinese people thinking? Yeah, so on Chinese media and social media, there were a lot of criticism against the local authority of Wuhan, uh, saying that they delayed the efforts of combating the uh, virus by covering up some information at the early stage of the outbreak. For example, uh, now we widely believe that a seafood market in Wuhan, which also sells wildlife, 
is the original source for the virus. And even though the first case of infection was reported in December, the seafood market was not closed until 24 days later in uh, first of January. And a lot of Chinese people were asking why? Why couldn't we do something earlier? Back during the SARS outbreak, there was no Twitter or Facebook or uh, Weibo or uh, uh, WeChat or Weibo. Um, how has that changed things? Is it providing more information or just scaring people? Well, it's always a, a double-edged sword, right? It's indeed uh, helping information to flow within the country. Uh, it's also making the Chinese government harder to uh, to cover up the story. Uh, I mean, every day I open my Weibo and WeChat, I see a plethora of information about the outbreak. Chinese media also pushing uh, the limits to report the story. At the same time, the social media have become a hotbed for misinformation. We mentioned some of the rumors earlier. On Twitter, a lot of information are actually translated from uh, Chinese social media. So there can be a, a lack. Um, and at the same time, it's really hard for people who are not based in Wuhan or not have the Chinese language skills to verify those videos. So I will suggest um, users of social media to take those information with a grain of salt. Zhao Yunfeng, thank you so much for talking to me. So lots of questions about how Chinese officials are handling this, but there are questions about what Canada is doing to stop the spread of the virus too. Every week, thousands fly between China and Canada. It's Lunar New Year. That's one of the highest travel times of the year. Well, years ago, our next guest, Maureen Taylor, was the Nationals health correspondent and covered the SARS outbreak. Now she's a physician assistant in infectious diseases. And Maureen, nice to see you. Not great circumstances. It's but nice to be here. So what do you think? I mean, we, we know there's a presumed case in Canada mm -hmm. now, but health officials are saying it's still very low risk. Mm -hmm. But you go on Twitter and some people are scared. I've been following this since December 31st when we started to hear about this virus. Uh, there didn't appear to be pneumonia or regular influenza in China. And um, I guess it depends who you're following on Twitter. So while I saw some, some of that weird stuff and panic stuff, I also was really amazed at how the science was coming uh, from, from China, way more forthcoming than, than during SARS. Unfortunately now, um, it's looking a little bit like they weren't as forthcoming as they should have been. They initially said there were, was no human-to-human -human transmission, that it all originated from an animal in the market giving it to a, a, somebody who worked there. And that's not true. They said there were no healthcare workers affected. Well, now we know there were 14 healthcare. So I'm sorry, but it's starting to feel a lot like SARS as far as the, what the Chinese have said and done. In the meantime, you ask about Canada. We are in a different position entirely. We don't have a state media, which we just heard about. And, and I think that the Canadian government had already put resources into surveillance, preparation. I know at the hospital level, I see way more preparation because... So much changed since SARS. Absolutely. Really. We, we learned so a lot. So what are Canadians to think? I think they're to think, let's remember, SARS came out of an animal into a human spread around the world, but we got it back into the animals. And there is no SARS in existence today except in the laboratory and in animals. So, so we're being we can told, do that. We're being told to stay calm, that yeah. it's, it's under control here. And yet on WeChat, apparently, there are people saying, oh, he flew here from Wuhan. There were other people right. on the flight. I'm keeping my kids out of school. Like, what do you think of that? And then, and then this gets picked up in the media. Yeah. And social media adds a whole new layer to all of this messaging that's out there that I didn't have to deal with when I was reporting on SARS. Such a change. I would advise people to be careful who you follow on Twitter and verifying things. You were referring to pictures of a hospital in China where corpses are basically shrouded and lying on the floor. But nobody's verified that that's an actual video of a Chinese or a Wuhan hospital. But it's quite possible. It's, we don't it, know. <laughs> if it is, then China needs to open up and ask the WHO for help. Because if that's what people who are going into hospital are going to see, they're going to say, I'm not going there. And then you have people staying out in the community, perhaps spreading it further. So, you know, we need to find out exactly what's going on in the ground in China so that we can be prepared in the rest of the world. 
During the SARS outbreak, there was a lot, I think you remember, NBC, the teams arrived, the media with their masks, and it was all, ah, oh, lots of panic. Yeah. There were people who weren't going to Chinese restaurants. The Prime yeah. Minister at the time spoke, at, like, what was what was it like? But, but do you also, that was all true. I remember the NBC crew came up and they said, you're not wearing masks? And I'm like, no. And most people in Toronto weren't. We were getting about our daily lives. And I think it's really important for the media to show that, 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 People aren't panicking, but Chrétien had to go and eat in the Chinese restaurants because, unfortunately, there was ostracism against that community, and I'm worried about that happening here as well. This first patient who came back from Wuhan, uh, people are going to talk about who was sitting around him on the plane, and then are we going to start to see people staying away from, you know, Chinatown and those restaurants, and if your kid's in school with someone who's not, it's ridiculous. So we just have to listen to the experts and listen to what they're telling us. It's tricky, huh? Trying to figure oh. out how to oh. inform people and yet not panic people. Please, one, one important thing, those of us who work in, in medicine and those scientists are excited because this is a very rare event. I thought, not as rare as I used to think, but anyway, for a, a virus to jump from an animal into humans and then through the human population. But don't mistake in their excitement for their panic. Like I said before, they can get this under control. We know that isolation and quarantine work, and we can put this back in animals again if we have transparency and the right information coming out. From China. Yeah. Exactly. Maureen, so great to hear your perspective on this. Thanks so much. It was nice to be here. Thank you.